Running 100 miles is not a good idea. Don't do it. It's not fun and it's certainly not healthy. Attempting to run four 100 milers in the space of a few months is quite frankly irresponsible and anyone who does so should seriously consider their life choices. However, here we were at Farnham Leisure Centre collecting trackers and bibs for the North Downs Way 100. Having crawled across the finish lines of the Thames Path and South Downs Way races, we felt a reluctant obligation to tow the line here, despite it being arguably the toughest in the series with the slowest average finish times. Race day coincided with the arrival of Storm Anthony, with high winds, torrential rain, thunder and lightning all forecast. How are you feeling? Nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous as well, actually. We're just waiting to cross the road to get to the start of the North Downs Way. Number three in the Grand Slam attempt. It's going to rain all day. It's due to stop raining about midnight tonight. So just here, this is the start of the North Downs Way trail. The start of the race is just a bit further down here in the, uh, in the woods. It is raining. It's uh, about three minutes to seven. We're at the head of the North Downs Way Trail. We're going to run around about 102 miles today. You know, we could, we could have chosen an easier year to do the Grand Slam, couldn't we? Final words? When you say final words, hopefully they're not my final words. <laughs> okay, we are off in one minute. Five, four, three, two, one. Away we go on the North Downs Way. Did he say good luck, Tim? Team. Oh, team. The full North Downs Way route is 153 miles, all the way to Dover. But we and 190 other starters were hoping to make it to Ashford in Kent in under 30 hours. So four miles in. Not far away. I think we're not far away from the first aid station. I think that's at six miles. It is, uh, it is drizzly rain. It's not pouring, but I feel quite wet because I think I've got my waterproof trousers on and I think I'm sweating in the waterproof trousers. So it feels like my legs are wet. But other than that, um, we've had a controlled start, a little bit quicker than possibly we should go, but just, I think we're both a bit nervous about making sure that we are well in time, this, uh, this race for all the cutoffs. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely paranoid. We so want to get to that finish line. And if we do, it will be a first for both of us. Yeah. This is unknown trails for us. I have never stepped foot on any of it. I regularly argue that you shouldn't bank time at the beginning of races because it often comes back to bite you later on. But on this occasion, Victoria and I did make a conscious decision to go off a little faster and thankfully the ground underfoot was very runnable in the early miles. The first checkpoint at Putnam didn't have an awful lot of food, but we both grabbed a bite on the way through. Peanuts. Peanuts. Thirteen kilometres in, one hour thirty-seven minutes. So, you know what? We're actually on sub twenty-hour pace at the moment. So that's how fast we're going in the first bit. Because just because we're nervous about it. So whilst we're ahead of schedule, it does actually feel like it's the correct approach. If you're running to feel, then I think we are on pace. Trying to stay calm, relax, and enjoy this. And crucially, at the moment, it's not raining. Famous last words, Stephen. For much of the race, I couldn't determine whether I was hot and sweating or the rain had soaked through my waterproofs. 10 miles in approximately two hours. Uh, we have met our crew, the lovely Karen, at Shalford. And she made us the best cup of tea. Uh, we had a quarter of a sandwich each, uh, cheese and marmite sandwich, 
I've had a packet of salt and vinegar chip sticks. Stephen has had a packet of Marmite crisps. Cheese and Marmite sandwiches and Marmite crisps. Can't go Happy wrong. Happy days. Happy days. This woodland trail is absolutely beautiful. Two hours, 47 minutes in, and we've just done a half marathon. So 21 kilometers. And we're on the top of St. Martha's Hill with St. Martha's Church just behind us there. If you've ever run the Downslink Ultra, you'll recognize St. Martha's Hill as the start. It's raining. Despite the increasingly torrential rain, we were running well and we reached the second checkpoint at Newlands Corner, feeling remarkably yeah, good. Tell me he's not good. Have you got a jacket on, Casey, later? Can you just shove it in? Stay in this time. Hopefully, yeah. Right, let's go. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, on our way. Thanks, thanks, Graham. See you. That's the official second aid station. Um, we're trying not to stay too long at aid stations because we have got crew. But I've got my bottles filled up. I've got a sandwich. I've got a Victoria's got a picnic egg. So we're on our way again. 23 kilometres so far. Hello, Dan. Hi, oh, yeah. Ash. So uh, I gather this is your first hundred. Yeah, first hundred. What what made you want to do it? Um, just seems like the next step from a fifty. I want to see what my body can do. Basically, can I go do the hundred? That's what excites me. What have you done before? Uh, I've done the Arc fifty. I DNF'd it last year, and I went back and finished the job this year, and then a couple of fifty k's as well. How are you feeling about it so far? Yeah, all good. I was a bit of a mess this morning. Like yes. before we started, yeah, I had a nosebleed for like the first time <laughs> in adult life. That, uh, oh, really? Yeah, I've, uh, wow. I've uh, settled down now and I feel like I'm in a good place. It's uh, Thanks, Dan. No worries. Thank you. The North Downs Way Trail opened in 1978 and is far more enclosed and urban than the South Downs Way. Much of the trail runs through woodland and it feels much more like numerous shorter trails linked together by tarmac sections through the towns en route. Right, we're four hours 53 in. We've just seen our crew, Karen, uh, at Denby's, which is around 22 miles in. So we're doing okay for time. We're not, we're not in any way uh, near to any cutoffs just yet, but like I said, we're only 20 odd miles in, so still a long way to go. How are you feeling, Vic? Okay, um, I am completely soaking wet. I don't know whether my waterproofs are now letting water in or whether it's just sweat inside, uh, but I'm completely soaked. She's complaining, she's complaining of water getting into it. But look, look where her zip is. Look where the zip is, right down there. Well, I'm completely soaked. However, my body temperature is okay. So on we go, on we go. On a bit of tarmac at the moment. It's still happy days. <laughs> the happy days continued as we made our way towards the next crew point at Denby's and on past the aid station at West Humble Fields. As expected, we were almost at the back of the pack, but unlike at this stage of the South Downs Way 100, today there were runners behind us who would go on to complete the distance. So this is the main A24 road between our hometown of Worthing, which is down south that way, and London north that way. And we're in Dorking, pretty much. Just about to climb Box Hill. We're 24 miles in, in five hours, 20. In the olden days, when everything was black and white, at this point in the race, runners would cross the famous Box Hill stepping stones. These days, it's safer and quicker to use the footbridge before climbing the steep stairs up the side of Box Hill to the top. It's one of the most daunting sections of the course, but thankfully it comes relatively early in the race before your legs have packed up and gone home. What was your assessment of the Box Hill steps then? Uh, quite a tough climb. I find it very... Uh, difficult to get a uh, rhythm going on steps and where possible I will go at the side. Um, I'm jolly glad I used my poles coming up there. I know I'm weak on hills 
um, and just do the best that I can. I do, however, feel like I'm now starting to need some more calories. So whilst my stomach is okay, um, and I've been sticking to savory snacks, it feels like I just need something extra. Maybe some sweet stuff now then. I might have some chocolate or something at the next aid station. So we're just coming to the top of Box Hill now. Uh, so this is Karen and Jaco, who um, are our dream team crew. Okay, we'll just call them crew for the time being. And if they get us to the end, uh, in the, then they're dream team. Right, that is a marathon done in just under six hours. Now, if we keep up that pace, <laughs> we'll be done in 24 hours. That's not gonna happen. We've just gone off slightly quicker. Uh, because we are so concerned about the cutoffs, but a marathon in six hours is, is decent enough. That's, that's fine, we'll be all right, we're feeling comfortable, so we just crack on. I've run very little of the North Downs Way Trail, but this section is one I had been on before, when I ran the North Downs Way Marathon six years ago. It was an out and back route starting at Rygate Hill with the halfway turnaround point at Box Hill. I remember it being a particularly dry, hot day in 2017, in stark contrast to the wet conditions we were now experiencing. 48 kilometres done, it's taken us just under seven hours, and we've bumped into backyard superstar Andrew Smith here, who has just stepped out of a salon. This is one of the steepest hills, possibly the steepest hill in the North Downs Way 100. 30 miles. And this is definitely up on the balls of your feet climbing, using the calf muscles to get up the hill. Once at the top though, there were good views across the Surrey Hills and we passed the Inglis Memorial donated to the Borough of Rygate in 1909 by Sir Robert Inglis. Seven and a half hours for 50k, 31 miles and we're going to hit the next checkpoint, Rygate checkpoint soon. It's really raining now, absolutely pouring down. Whilst the conditions might look bad, rain falling on your head really isn't a problem as long as you're wearing appropriate clothing. In fact, it can be quite refreshing. The difficulties arise when the rain makes the ground slippery or sticky. That's when progress really slows. We're a bit wet. Yeah, we don't want, we don't want summer sunshine, do we? Who needs summer sunshine? Uh, got any chocolate? Little bits of chocolate anywhere? So this is Rygate. Oh, I don't want that much. All right, hang on, I need my balls. You, you stay away from me. Fifty-five kilometres in, welcome to the M25 near Mersham. What would you rather have? Would you rather have pouring rain for the entirety of your 100 miler, or would you like heat like we had at the South Downs Way? I know which one is better for my stomach, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's still pretty grim. <laughs> We're having a good time. It's half past four in the afternoon. There's a lovely view. This is Caterham aid station that we've just been to. And uh, we're on our way, 62 kilometers done, 38 miles or so, 39 miles. Uh, it's quite a way until we see 
uh, Karen and Jayco next. So we are having to stop at those aid stations. Um, Victoria's gone on ahead, as is her way. <laughs> and I'll catch her up in a minute. So we're, we're feeling good, feeling fine. But Victoria's got a little bit of a tight stomach. Um, but other than that, we are, we are okay. At 40 miles in, both Victoria and I were still managing to eat. I was surviving on Marmite and cheese sandwiches and crisps. Hot cups of tea were also going down well. A few squares of chocolate had provided some sugar, but in general it is the savoury stuff that seems to sit well on my stomach. Victoria was eating potatoes, mini sausages, cheese, crisps and cup of soup. She also had some Jamaica ginger cake at Botley Hill. The rain is on and off, so sometimes it's a bit sunny and bright and it looks like the rain's going to clear up and go away and then it suddenly downpours again. We're hopeful that the rain won't last too much longer. Uh, there's the M25 over there and you can even see some blue sky just beyond Victoria there. It's always nice to chat to volunteers at the checkpoints and thank you to everyone who recognised us and came up to say hello. At Botley Hill Aid Station, I had wanted some Coca-Cola and noticed the wasps drowning in the jugs. It reminded me of my volunteering experience on the North Downs Way race some years ago. There was loads of dead ones in there and we just didn't tell the runners. <laughs> Did you just tell the runner? That's a good one. Just added, added sort of, I don't know. I know we took them out, but it's just, you know, yeah, what can you do? To it, yeah. It? yeah. 11 hours, 27 minutes into the North Downs Way 100. We've covered 72 kilometres, we've got 91 kilometres left to run. Or left to walk. <laughs> At least the rain has gone away for the time being. We've just been to Botley Hill Aid Station, seven miles to the next one. Finally caught Victoria up again, just as it starts to spit with rain again. How's it going, Vic? Okay, um, my pace has slowed, which is why I left the uh, checkpoint earlier than Stephen. I've just got to keep moving. Uh, Stephen has the ability to catch me up, so it just makes sense. How's your stomach? Um, it's not great, but... It's settled from what it was and for 46 miles, nearly 47 miles, I'm feeling relatively good. Lots of uh, big fat slugs on the trails <laughs> and another field of ruined wheat. When you talk about big fat slugs on the trails, you're not talking about me, are you? No. No, okay, that's good. Uh, 12 hours in, just, just under 12 hours. And yeah, we've done 47 miles, so we are not far off the 50 mile mark. That's not quite halfway, but we are getting there. But in places, it's really muddy and quite slippery. Um, and I'm finding it difficult to move on on that terrain. It's easier with poles than when we're on Thames Path, just sliding all over the place. That's true. I've taken paracetamol because I've um, had uh, pain in my back. I've also had to put some more uh, anti-chafe cream on. I'm actually starting to get some um, feet issues. I think where my feet are so wet for so long. Right. Uh, at 54, is it, miles when we see our crew? Yeah. I'll need to dry my feet off, sort them out, put some dry socks on. And I'm very much looking forward to being able to count down the distance. In any race, I look forward to that halfway mark. It's all psychological. Okay, yeah. Right, we've arrived at halfway. Uh, we are at Knockholt aid station. I've got pasta and coffee. Victoria's just gone to apply chafe cream. Uh, so we're just gonna stay here for five minutes and eat some food. And then we've got Jayco and Karen meeting us in four miles. So that'll be good as well. 
uh, and we're feeling you know i mean we've done 50 miles so we're tired um but as good as can be expected at this stage good. what's your name sean sean how many how many hundreds have you done this is my fifth fifth well, one this is my fifth one hopefully i'll complete a day and a half couple but i'm on the, on the, on the slam with you guys so. excellent hopefully. excellent fingers crossed well you've got to get you've got to finish today then haven't you yeah, yeah, see you at the next one. Cheers, Sean. Uh, so we're at 51 miles, uh, which is a good, good feeling. We popped into Not Colt Aid Station. Um, the original plan was to go straight past. However, for the first time ever, I've suffered chafing. I think it's where I, all this heavy rain my clothes are just soaking wet and I am suffering a little, shall we say. <laughs> so not quite, we're, we're getting away without the head torches just at the moment. And just descending this hill, we've still got running in our legs. So I had a cup of soup at Not Colt. And we are seeing our crew, is it four miles? Yeah, in about three or four miles. Sure enough, we met our crew in the railway station car park at Otford. I took time to completely change out of my wet clothes and deal with chafing and blister issues. Whilst changing, I also managed to flash my bare arse to a number of startled train passengers. Okay, we're in Otford station and 55 miles in we're just having a little break with uh, karen and jaco who are making us drinks and um pandering, to your every blood pandering pandering to our every need and what we are doing well i am deliberately is being as annoying as possible just to make them work extra hard because basically it's funny and <laughs> they will break my legs by the end of tonight who's uh, in the lead anybody yeah you haven't been, you haven't been checking have you I should have been I should have put this on my list of things I need you to do. Yeah, all right. Unfortunately, despite the break and the reset, as the night wore on and the rain continued, Victoria's stomach began to turn. Feeling a bit nauseous now. She was trying to take on calories, but they weren't settling. We had to stop a number of times for her to be sick. In addition, the ground was now saturated and we were starting to slip and slide. It's just gone one o'clock, so that means um, we have 12 hours to finish this race and we have 36 miles to go. We are now starting again to think, worry about cutoffs a bit because uh, we, we've only got four hours to get to an aid station that's 11 miles away and we're, we are a bit worried about that, but we are doing our best to get moving as quickly as we can. Um, Vic, how are you feeling? Terrible, my stomach's gone. Yeah, but you can st you're still running, aren't you? Yeah, I'm really, really trying to do my best. Okay, yeah, I'm weeing, it's all good. Yeah, but is it like a rusty... I'm not, I'm not going into detail about my wee. Karen. <laughs> with that late in a, with that late on in an ultra now, that's all subject to conversation. Yeah. It's half past two in the morning. We're outside McDonald's. Look, I've got a cheeseburger to eat. Uh, Karen and Jaco are doing an absolutely fantastic job. We are really feeling wrecked now because Karen scared us at the last crew point by saying that we needed to hurry along. Um, and so we've bombed it really as hard as we could to get here, but we've still got seven miles to go to um, quite a, a tight cut off at Bluebell Hill. But we, we hopefully we'll get there. I mean, well we've got time. Two and three quarter hours to seven miles. Right, two and three quarter hours to do seven miles. I think, I think we can do that. But we should crack on, yeah? Well, that was a nice surprise. We've arrived at Bluebell Hill about four kilometers before I expected to. So uh, we are, we're we well in time now. We didn't need to worry too much about the cutoffs. No, Although we've, really we've still got a marathon to do, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. But yeah, so this is, this is Bluebell Hill aid station. 
uh, with a lovely view, I'm sure, during the day. Out of it's, it's not bad at night. I don't know if you can see. You, you won't be able to see that, will you? You all right, Victoria? No. No. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> Up to now, I had been feeling pretty good, but as dawn broke and Victoria started to improve, I began to flag. Ah, uh, done in now. Yeah. Thank you. We're at Detling with just over 20 miles to go, but I'm feeling terrible. Uh, I feel like I need to get changed, so I might put my um, different shorts on and take my waterproof um, trousers off. Milk, no sugar, thank you. So that's what I did. I changed my underwear and shorts and packed my waterproof trousers away. I also changed my socks and cleaned my feet in an attempt to drag myself out of the low period I'd found myself in. The sunrise and beautiful scenery certainly helped, but the big challenge now was keeping up with Victoria, who had suddenly found her running legs and a new lease of life. About 16 miles to go, but I'm, I'm wrecked. Victoria is pushing on. We've got Jaco pacing us. It's about four miles to the next aid station. The cutoff for that aid station is 9.30. At the moment, we're due to get there at about 10 to 9. So inside the cutoff, just about at the moment. But we can't afford to slow down. And, and I've been feeling like I need to throw up for the past few hours. It's a beautiful day now. But I just want this to be over. I'm, I'm so tired and... I'm just not functioning properly at all. Victoria's, I think she's just blocking out the pain and trying to get on with it. She's just up ahead. Right, this is Lenham. Lenham Aid Station where I volunteered about three years ago, I think. Um, I am completely done in. Victoria has gone as is her way these days. She just breezes in and out of the aid stations um but yeah I, I just it's all i can do to stay on my feet um so i need to get on because uh cut off here is at 9 30 it's now what is it 10 to 9 it is just short just gone 10 about 10 to 9 now so we've got 40 minutes on here 11 45 cut off at the the final aid station which is dunn street we should get there in plenty of time we are going to finish this, it's just going to be pretty grim. Our pacer Jaco kept worrying about Stephen. Should I go back and find him, he kept saying. I told him Stephen would be fine and would catch us up, which is precisely what happened a few kilometres down the trail as we approached the final checkpoint in the race. It's 10.15 in the morning, we have 11 kilometres left of the North Downs Way 100. My stomach has settled a little. Vic? Uh, mine goes in waves. Um, when I'm feeling okay, I can run reasonably strong. And then I just have another burst of my stomach going and I just have to walk it out again. How, how have you been? Because we haven't spoken to you in ages because you be, keep running away from me. I'm just desperate to get that buckle. I've got to keep moving forward. Um, just like South Downs Way, every aid station we get to, I faff about and Victoria just takes what she needs and goes very efficiently. And it, then I've spent all morning basically catching Victoria out of various aid stations. But we know that you're the stronger runner and that you can pick up that time. I can't do that. So we need me to just keep moving forward. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see you again. And you. <laughs> right, this is Dunn Street, final aid station on the way home to the Julie Rose Stadium where we finish. Um, 
We've got four and a half miles left to go. And it's a beautiful day now, isn't it? Gorgeous here. Um, Let's get that buckle. Okay, let me just have it. I might have a piece of watermelon and this bit of coke. Once again, Victoria flew off before me. Feeling good, she now had the bit between her teeth and was eyeing runners ahead of her. This last five miles was some of the most impressive running I've seen from my wife. 97 miles in and she was running strong and trying to gain places. Thankfully, I was also feeling much better, so I was able to eventually catch her up. But I had to run hard to do so, such was Victoria's pace in the final miles. Nearly there, so near yet so far. As we approached the Julie Rose Stadium in Ashford, I couldn't help feeling that despite this being the race we'd most feared, the one we had most worried about completing, and despite the conditions during the first day, this had been our finest performance and our strongest finish of the Grand Slam thus far. That has to be down in part to the cumulative endurance gains from the previous 100s, as well as having a crew to keep us on our toes and moving forward. We didn't know it at the time, but passing Louise here on the track meant Victoria would finish the North Downs Way 100 first in her age category. We've worked so hard for this. That's a fantastic achievement again. Victoria's knocked it out of the park once again on another 100 miler towards the Centurion Slam. Three that one to go. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe. You know what to do. Thank you for watching. And here comes the finish line. Go on then. Thank you very much. Well done. Are you pleased with yourself? Extremely pleased. Yeah. Was there a, was there a point at which you thought you might not do it? I knew I wanted it badly. I wasn't sure whether we could pull it off. Um, we were really paranoid about cutoffs. Especially when Karen said, you better hurry up for that bluebell I, I hill. Had, did it not? It did work. It did. I had really bad chafing. I didn't know if that would be an issue. I had bad blisters. I didn't know if that would be an issue. My stomach went. I didn't know if that would be an issue. So you've had it all, haven't you, on an ultra? We've had, got it done, though. Yeah. And that's the story of our North Downs Way adventure. If you'd like to watch my very first 100 mile race, then click the link on the screen. Please subscribe if you've not already done so and we'll see you on the start line next time.